a hunger to learn, a hunger to improve, to develop, you know, asking questions around, you know, of more senior people. If they, if, you know, if you've actually had to do something in their presence, if they've seen, observed you, or they've heard you asking for feedback, how could I do that better? What, you know, was there anything that I could have done differently? You know, just showing a real desire to learn and develop and grow and being humble enough to accept feedback if occasionally it's it's critical, you know, um, because in my personal experience, I learned far more from my failures and what went wrong than I did from my successes. My name is Alistair Proctor. I'm the Senior Vice President for Global Strategic Human Resource Operations, which is a mouthful and doesn't uh, help you very much understand what I do, for a company called Interpublic. Interpublic is one of the world's larger advertising stroke marketing communications holding companies. So fundamentally, we comprise a number of agency businesses that operate in the in the field of advertising in its broadest sense, spanning from you know classical creative advertising like Mad Men, uh, as you might imagine it, to you know data driven, more sort of um, analytical based disciplines, PR, media, programmatic, and sort of digital performance media marketing, all that sort of stuff. So a complete range of agency disciplines that comprise the enterprise. We're about. 53,000 employees globally spread across a wide geography. We, we're operating pretty much any market country you might want to consider. And we have annual revenues of around $10 billion per annum. I came from relatively modest, I suppose, background. Um, I was born and grew, grew up in Newcastle upon Tyne in the northeast of England. My father was a butcher and my mother was, well, originally a primary school teacher, but I was the eldest child. And as soon as I was born, she gave up work and never went back. Stayed in Newcastle until I was 18. And then I was lucky enough to go to university, uh, to St. Andrews University, where I studied French and Spanish. I mainly picked those subjects because they were the only subjects I was vaguely any good at. So I chose languages. And I say I, I had a great time at university, but I was probably, I described myself looking back as pretty naive, pretty sheltered in many ways certainly not streetwise. And, you know, I had 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 limited work experience up until really I went to university. I had worked, you know, in the shop where my father worked as just as a counter assistant. And that was pretty much it. I mean, the world of work has changed a lot, I will say. So I think the big shock in those days, and it's probably, I think this still holds, this does still hold true, is that I thought it was all about the work. And that if you could do a good job, you know, if you were conscientious, you worked hard you, at the end of the day, you know, whatever it was, was you were doing, uh, whether you were you know, cert, were working in a service industry or whether you were making things or whatever it was, as long as you did a good job, provided a good service or served up a good product, that was all that mattered. And, you know, when it comes to progressing from a career perspective, I'm afraid that is not all that matters. That is, I mean, you have to obviously, you know, produce a decent outcome at the end of the day, you know, that's what you're paid to do. But that really is just table stakes. That just gets you into a job. If you want to progress and grow, you know, within an organization or elsewhere, you know, and and and, and progress your career, then you need to think about a whole load of other things. And, and you know, I think, you know, relationships at work, especially, and your attitude in general and the way that you demonstrate your attitude are critically important as well. Pretty early on, it wasn't my first role, but I was very junior at the time, nonetheless. And I was working for, uh, you know, a company. It's changed a bit since then. It's it's a lot bigger than it was in those days, but it was a great it was a great company, um, you know, called Intercontinental Hotels. And I went for a couple of promotions. Uh, I worked, I was based in one hotel and I put myself forward for a couple of promotions to a higher, more senior role based in two other hotels. And, you know, I, I kind of figured, well, you know, I'm good at what I do. You know, I work really hard. You know, that that should speak for itself. And what I hadn't done really was invest in relationship building outside of my own specific area, if you like my own hotel. I had good relationships there, but you know, in order to progress 
sort of more extensively within the organization. I needed to have a broader network of contact. And I guess I, you know, personality wise, I'm not one to blow my own trumpet. I don't like it when I kind of feel as though people are sort of, you know, creeping, you know, trying to suck up to the powers that be. I, you know, so, you know, I, I get irritated when I hear people sort of just, you know, talking a lot of flannel just to kind of self-promote. And I'm not suggesting that's what you should be doing, by the way. But I think, you know, there is there is a sort of compromise somewhere between those two positions. At the end of the day, people, when they are hiring or deciding who gets promoted and who doesn't get promoted, what they want to know is, is this person going to do a good job and, the, and are they going to be relatively easy to work with? You know, that's on their mind and they want comfort around those two things. And if they don't really know you, then maybe they've heard of your reputation from a sort of the work you produce perspective. But what's it going to be like to work with you that they really don't know unless unless they know you, there's some degree of relationship. And I think if you, you know, if you've already crossed that bridge and they they feel they do have some understanding of you as a person and they're comfortable about how you present and the way you interact with them, then that's a massive advantage in your favor when it comes to being considered for, you know, a, a bigger job or, you know, w- whatever that might be. You know, don't be daunted just because someone is more senior. It doesn't mean to say you can't engage them in conversation, you know, whether that's just waiting for a lift, you know, to come while you, you know, you chat rather than just standing silently checking your phone. I think also, you know, asking a lot of questions, uh, never be frightened to ask questions, you know, show some real interest. If you're lucky enough to get opportunities without without it being too clumsy or too sort of contrived, then look for opportunities to get broader experience. You know, if there's, you know, volunteers needed for something, you know, put yourself forward, you know, so it, it, it's, and it's not, it's not again about saying I'm amazing. It's about, do you need some help with this? Or I'd love to get involved. You know, I'd love to learn more about this area. You know, what, what, how could I best learn about X or Y? These are the sorts of conversations that will get you noticed. People say, oh, you know, this person's got some real hunger and that's what they want to see. They want to see some hunger that is not, you know, crazy Machiavellian ambition. You know, you're not going to go around stabbing everyone in the back to get to the top, but a hunger to learn, uh, a hunger to improve, to develop, you know, asking questions around, you know, of more senior people. If they, if, you know, if you've actually had to do something in their presence, if they've seen, observed you, or they've heard you asking for feedback, how could I do that better? What, you know, was there anything that I could have done differently? You know, just showing a real desire to learn and develop and grow and being humble enough to accept feedback if occasionally it's it's critical, you know, um, because in my personal experience, I learned far more from my failures and what went wrong than I did from my successes. And I think if you can capitalize on that, you know, A, you, you increase your own self-awareness, which makes you better, um, but it also says something to other people about your attitude about what it's going to be like to work with you perhaps on a more close basis or if you're in a more senior role, what what that's likely to mean for other people around you. You know, is it all going to go to your head or are you going to be humble, collaborate, collegiate and so forth? That's what people want to know. A hunger to learn, a hunger to improve, to develop, you know, asking questions around, you know, of more senior people, if they, if, you know, if you've actually had to do something in their presence, if they've seen, observed you, or they've heard you asking for feedback, how could I do that better? What, you know, was there anything that I could have done differently? You know, just showing a real desire to learn and develop and grow and being humble enough to accept feedback. If occasionally it's, it's critical, you know, um, because in my personal experience, I learned far more from my failures and what went wrong than I did from my successes. 